Again, welcome back to Programming Logic and Design Course. In this lecture, we're going to cover the pseudocode statements and flowchart symbol. So our main objective is to use the pseudocode statements and flowchart diagrams to design an algorithm or to design the program. So an algorithm is the set of instructions in sequential order or steps to solve a problem. An algorithm can be written in a plain language or a pseudocode. Also can be described by a diagram-based flowchart. So again, in these lectures, we're going to cover the pseudocode and also a flowchart diagram. This flowchart diagram also are implemented in different computer applications, uh, such as Microsoft Visio. So again, a pseudocode, again, are uh, a simplified version of a computer programs and written in natural language or human readable language. In this course, we are going to use English language. So a pseudocode can be read and followed by programmers to write the computer programs. So we normally use the pseudocodes to design a program. Then from the pseudocode, we are going to translate using a programming language to write the, the code. So a pseudocode does not have a specific syntax. Actually, we can use any language such as French, Spanish, etc. Again, in this course, we are using English. One thing says it's an English language, the computer cannot execute it. So pseudocode can be implemented in a specific programming language. In this course, again, pseudocode will be English-like representation of the logical steps it takes to solve a problem. Then we're also going to use the flowchart, which is a pictorial representation of the logical steps it takes to solve a problem. So we have an example here. This is a pseudocode representation of a number doubling problem. So our problem here is that we are going to ask a user to enter an input then we are going to double the input, then we print the result. So normally in this course, we are going to use start at the beginning of the pseudocode, pseudo, uh, the pseudocode, then at the end, we have stop to stop the pseudocode. So we start with the word start. We need our input, so we use the word input, and the input will be in a variable name, my number. Then next, our operation section, we are going to use the keyword set. So our operation here is arithmetic operation. We, we multiply the input by two, then we assign the result to a variable name my answer. Then I'm going to output the result in my answer. So again, here we start the, the pseudocode syntax. We start with the start and then we end it with stop. And we have input, the process is set, and then the output result. So programs begin with the word start and also end with the word stop. And we say that these two words are always aligned. So when we look at our example, you can see start and stop are aligned together. Then whenever a major name is used, it's also followed by, again, a set of parentheses. Modules always begin with a module name and it will end with return. So the module name and the return are always aligned also. Each program statement performs one action. For example, we have input, process, or output. Here in the pseudocode, we say the process is to set a variable to some specific number. In this case, we double it by multiplying the input by two. So our process is my answer equal to my number times two, double. And the input is my number, the output is the result. So program statements are indented, as we can see in the example. These are the statement input set and output, they are indented. A few space, again, the space is up to you. It's a few space more than the word start or the stop also. And if possible, the module name also. 
So each program statement appears on a single line, if possible. When this is not possible, then we have to have a continuation lines uh, indented. In our example, everything appear one line, single line. Now, program statement begin with lowercase letters. There's no any punctuations used to end the statement. Next is drawing the flowchart. Uh, drawing the flowchart, we need to learn some few symbols here. For example, the paragraph here represent an input. Also, we can use it for output. So a paragraph symbol will represent input and output. Then a rectangle will represent the process. So in the pseudocode, we use the set, which is our process. So here we can see a paragraph. Our input is my number. The process is to double my number. So we multiply it by two and we assign the result to a variable name, my answer. Then we have the output, which is also a paragraph symbol. And we output the variable, my answer. We're also going to have a flow lines. The flow lines will tell us the direction when the formation is going in the order of execution. So arrows will be connecting the steps. We also have the terminal symbols. In the pseudocode, we use the start and stop. Here, we are going to use an over symbol, which will represent the beginning and the end, or start and stop. So let's see the previous example again. So this is our pseudocode again. We have the start. Our input is a variable, my number. That's where we're going to store our input. Then we double my number. We multiply by two, assign the result to a variable, my answer then we display our output form our answer. Now with the flow chart, we start with the over symbol start. We use the paragraph, which is an input symbol. So input my number. Rectangle is our, again, process. So my answer equal to my number times two. And then the output, the result also paragraph. Here we can see that the arrow is going down, which means execution start from the top all the way down. Now, program in figure 1-7, which is the previous slide, will only works for one number. So this is not feasible to run program over and over again. So what we mean is that if we have to double maybe 20 different values input, we don't want to write the code 20 times. So maybe the best way will be we should use a loop or some form of the features that will make it possible to repeat the same thing over and over again, which will be a loop. So here we say, okay, if you want to do this 10,000 times, we don't want to write a code 10,000 10, times. That's too much. So here, not feasible to add 10,000 lines of a code to a program. So we need to create a loop, which is a repetition of a series of steps instead. Also, most important, we should avoid an infinity loop. An infinity loop is a loop that can never stop. So here I want to execute something 10,000. So I'll write my loop with a condition that when I reach 10,000, after 10,000, the loop have to terminate. If the loop cannot terminate, then we have infinity loop, which means it's going to be repeating forever. So this is what is not good. So here we say, don't do it. You will never want to write such a repetitious list of instruction. Here we want to double the number 10,000 times. So we write our first code, we double by two, double again, double three times. We have to do it up to 10. So remaining 9,000 now and 97 more times to double. This will be too much. And this is the flowchart diagram for it. So after we finish the first uh, double of the value, we go all over again. So we keep going. So this also is not a good idea. Don't do it. Now here we need to learn how a program will make a decision. So if we are going to write a loop, we should have a decision that if the counter variable reach 10,000, we have to stop. So we need to make a decision that is to test a value. And this decision in flowchart, we use the diamond shape. 
Also, we can use the dummy value. A dummy value is a data entry value that the user will never need. And we use the term sentinel value. So for example, I can write a while loop that while X is not equal to 10, do something, which means I can keep doing anything I want to do as far as Y uh, value is not equal to 10. Anytime we enter 10, the loop will stop and 10 becomes the sentinel value to stop the loop. So we have the example here. This also is not that good. We shouldn't do it. Because here, after we finish the execution, we get input again. But here, all we are saying is that if then my number is equal to zero, if the number is equal to zero, we stop. Uh, yes, then stop. If no, then we double it. But the best way is giving also another option here, end of a file. And we will see that the best way is to have the loop. Next is understanding the programming and also user environment. So normally we are going to use different types of IDE, such as integrated development environment. And normally we'll provide a test editor to write your source file, then a compiler, to compile it, then also to execute it. A good example given is the Microsoft Visual Studio. And also we may have two types of environment, either the command line environment or graphical user interface. We will discuss this in the future lectures. Also how to write uh, the selection statement and also the loop. We are going to discuss that in our future lectures. So here they mention in chapter three, which again, the future lectures. So this is the example again. And this example, we are using implementation. After we design finish, we implement it. Again, this is a C-sharp language. Uh, we are not going to learn the syntax of the language. But here you can see that we declare two variables. Normally in the main function, that's where the execution will take place. So we can remember in our pseudocode, we have my number variable now, we declare it. In C sharp, we have to specify the data type for the variable. The data type here int means we can only enter a whole number here to my number. Then my answer is the variable that we are going to store our results. So we declare the two variables. Now in C sharp, the keyword write allow us to print something on a console application on the blast screen. So here we say, please enter a number. Then the user enter the number using the read line, console.read line. When we read the line, the data type will be in string. So we use convert to int32 to convert the data to int because the variable is int. And anytime you want to do calculation, you have to have either a value in a decimal form, which is a float or double, or you have to be a whole number, which can be int or long. So next we have the input now. So we double it, multiply by two. Then we use the keyword right line or the right line function. And in C sharp, it allows us to print our results. So here we can see our input, our process, which is multiplication here. Then our output is the right line section. So that will be the conclusion of this lectures. Again, see you in our next lectures.